the first speaker on my list for today is Mr. I Honorable Member Irfan Ali. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before I commence my presentation, on behalf of the People's Progressive Party Civic, we wish to thank all the public servants and all those workers who work tremendously hard whilst you are in government to give today a Guyana that is vibrant, buoyant, productive, and leading the Caribbean in growth and development. I want to say that we are very worried about the recent developments in the public service, where persons who have served us well, persons who have served this country, are sent home, are fired, are removed from their jobs without any justice, without any reason. This, Mr. Speaker, is something that we must address and something that Budget 2015 would have to contemplate during the course of this debate. Mr. Speaker, the recent elections reminds us how, the fra how fragile democracy is and how important it is for us to safeguard institution tasks with protecting democracy. Depo democracy cannot and would not reject verification and recount. It would always seek to verify and remove any doubt. The results of these elections are subject to court proceedings, and we are confident that the reckless and arbitrary style in which GCOM operated will be exposed. It is important to note that Budget 2015 is framed in such a context in, the modern, in this modern era. When the foundation on which you stand is questionable, confidence in you and trust in you becomes an issue. Nevertheless, the PPPC has always put the people and the country first. And as such, we are here today to defend, protect, and promote the rights, privileges, and aspirations of the Guyanese people. We are not a party of false hope and promises. Our track, track record will show that we have delivered consistently to the people of Guyana. We restored democracy in this country. We brought Guyana from economic ruins to prosperity. Imagine after two months in office, you can boast of the largest budget and have enough resources to implement all your programs. That, my friends, is as a result of the hard work and tireless effort of the PVPC. Like we did in 1992, most government goes into power with things sliding downwards. In this case, in his case, in this case, you inherit the successes of nine consecutive years of economic growth and development. You, are, you have inherited foreign reserves of more than 615 million, 300% more than Carl, the Honorable Member Carl when it's left. We have left you a country today that is vibrant, buoyant, and full of energy. But, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, however, I know that you, you people have to hear, but there's an Honorable Member across the way, the Vice President no less, using the word teething and accusing people on this side of the house of teething all the money. And I would ask that this is unparliamentary. And that Mr. Speaker, you caution the Vice President to stop this nonsense in this house. I thank the Honorable Member for bringing that to the Speaker's attention. But I do believe that we should avoid the heated expressions which suggest unparliamentary language. 
Thank you. Please, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, uh, Mr. Speaker, I hope the timekeeper is, is going to give me back my minutes. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you can make all type of slogans and shout what you want. But one thing for sure, this government never sought to increase the salaries of ministers by 100%. And that was one of your first tasks. One of your first tasks within your first 100 days. Oh, well, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, however, however, if you want a lesson in the fastest way to destroy a good economy, then this government is providing that lesson. And I'm very disappointed in the honorable member, Mr. Winston Jordan, who must have learned something under the astute leadership of Dr. Ashley Singh. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Budget 2015, Budget 2015 has taken away thousands of jobs. Budget 2015 has taken away thousands of jobs and over one, bil over one billion dollars from Amerindian villages. Budget 2015 has taken away, Budget 2015 has taken away more than $500 million of direct subsidies to the pensioners. Budget 2015 has taken away $10,000 for family, poor families. Budget 2015 has further delayed the, the aspirations of the Guyanese people in having cheap electricity as, as low as 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Budget 2015 has contracted the building and construction sector. The contraction of one project alone in the housing sector has seen the loss of close to 350 jobs. Budget 2015 has failed to address the issue of confidence and to remove the steady rhetoric on certain investors and companies. Budget 2015 is presented when workers in the bauxite industry are being retrenched, yet it is silent on its approach in dealing with these workers. Budget 2015 is presented when the price of oil has stumbled, yet we hear of no reduction in electricity tariff for the ordinary Guyanese. Budget 2015 has formally shut out the opportunity of our people having access to specialized health care. In the future, at a time when other countries in the region are expanding specialized health care facilities. If you are to look at the capital estimates, you will see the budget 2015 has reduced investment in almost every region except region four. Region one, two, three, five, six, and nine bore the brunt of this, an attracted reduction of almost $800 million in capital estimates. What is worse is that this budget boasts about a new approach to expanding agriculture. And in region two, three, five, and six, the regional allocation for agriculture has almost been cut by close to 70%. Shame. Shame. With region six and two, with region six and two, feeling the brunt of this, losing $81 million each from agricultural investment. Shame. Shame. This is what you have promised the rice farmers? Shame. Shame. No, Shame. Not, only, not only did you abandon your promise of 9,000 per bag, not only did you abandon your promise of higher paying markets, but now you seek to deprive them of important resources to boost investment in drainage and irrigation that is critical to the survival of the farmers. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2015 speaks to a green economy. The green economy is built around, article, uh, around sustainable extract of our wealth for current and future generation. That is what the Honorable Minister of Finance said. What is fresh about this? We have one of the most powerful tools to accomplish this in the LCDS. But what do we choose to do with it? Lay it aside. This document has international goodwill 
and credibility and is second to none in achieving the aspirations of a green economy. Any good investor, any good investor, not you, Mr. Greenwich, say any good investor, any good investor understands the value, understand the value and nature of goodwill. But we have a government that ignores this. Mr. Speaker, maybe the only positive out of budget 2050 is that we have one of the most critical thinker in transformative Guyana present with us in the National Assembly in the form of the Honorable Barrett Jagdeo. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, there is a lot of fluff in Budget 2015. I describe it as an essay full of fluff. There, there's a lot of statements, but there is no policy formulation to give meat to the statements. There is no structured approach in how we will achieve this output of the statements. But what I can do, and I've seen the government would have started it in some aspect of the budget, they have referred to the PPP Civic Manifesto. And that is a good point to start. So I would say to the government that you have a good reference point. Use this document and serve the people of Guyana. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Minister of Finance has made many claims. One of his claims is that the economy is bankrupt. Mr. Speaker, I am still trying to understand how this seasoned economist would draw the conclusion that this economy is bankrupt. And while he is saying the economy is bankrupt, on the other hand, on the other hand, he is saying, are you saying that you never said the economy was bankrupt? On the other hand, he is saying, he is saying we have found 23 billion, 40 billion in private commercial bank accounts. He has said in the budget that we have more than $615 billion in foreign reserves. Yet, he is saying the economy is bankrupt. An economy, an economy that is outperforming every single other economy in the Caribbean. And he said that this economy is bankrupt. But the point is, the point is, Mr. Speaker, I believe this minister is a good visionary. By the time he is finished, I am sure he will be bankrupt. By the that is the vision he has. He is running ahead of his vision. He's not speaking about the present. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, let us, let us review the June 2015 statistical abstract of the Bank of Guyana. And I'm sure the Honorable Member has access to this document. Gross International Reserve of Guyana was 621.8 million at the end of May 2015. This, honorable speaker, is 300% more than when we came to government. At a minimum, at a minimum, the honorable minister of finance should credit the PAPC for growing the country's reserve by more than 300%. The 2015 statistical abstract of the Bank of Guyana shows that total deposits, total deposit of the public sector was 66.2 billion at the end of May 2015. And it increased to 70.3 billion. How can we therefore claim that the PPC bankrupt the economy, leaving the Treasury without funds? Mr. Speaker, put bluntly, public sector deposit at the time of change in administration was highest in the last 10 years. Was highest in the last 10 years. The statistics are showing that we have substantial savings in the commercial banks and consolidated fund. It leaves one to wonder, and I think, either monies are earmarked for questionable expenditures, or the administration have no idea of the current financial status of the economy. 
Mr. Speaker, this administration is now faced with a task. That task is fulfilling all the gimmicks and public pronouncements they made in the campaign. That task is to fulfill the promise in the 100 days document. And whilst they use this as a tool to capture the Guyanese people, they are now faced with the reality of bringing this benefit to the people. And it's clear that this is not their priority. We have seen what is the priority of this new administration. Extravagance. Extravagance. And the honorable member, Mr. Carl Greenwich, was the author of extravagance when he was Minister of Finance. A time, a time, a time when the entire Guyana Airways was commandeered to South Africa. Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, anyone, anyone with knowledge of our, our economy, we know that our country has always recorded fiscal deficits in the past. As a matter of fact, you, you tell us how much you buy the house for. There is no period. There is no period in our post-independence history where the country had an overall fiscal surplus. However, under the PPP's stewardship, the overall fiscal balance displayed marked improvement. Firstly, it's important to note that PPC administration has consistently reported current account surpluses. Consistently reported current account surpluses. Accounted for as much as 36.7% of GDP in 1984. Today, today it is 6.3%, and are on, are on an average of 5% between 2006 to 2014. It is stewardship of the economy, brother. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, in May, in May of this year. The Bank of Guyana annual report provided the following forecast. The economy is projected to grow by 5.3% at the end of December 2015. Growth expected to be widespread. The International Monetary Fund, in its latest forecast, World Economic Outlook, has projected Guyana economy to grow by 3.8%, the third highest in South America, behind Bolivia, 4.3%, and Paraguay, 4%. The IMF projected growth of 4.4% in 2016, second only to Peru, whose economy is projected to grow by 5%. These are the facts. This is the economy you inherited. The outlook for Guyana. Mr. Speaker, apparently, apparently, apparently the outlook for Guyana has suddenly changed has suddenly changed based on, the, based on all the indicators. The economy is contracting and the growth targets will have to be adjusted downwards. Why? Why, Mr. Speaker? Why? After two months in government, the government has not come off of its rhetoric. Investors are losing confidence. Investors are losing confidence. They are losing confidence. Understand, Mr. Speaker, the government needs to understand that confidence plays an important and integral role in attracting investors and people to your country. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, only yesterday, Starbuck News carried an article which reports that all the major construction, all the major construction work in Region 4 will be postponed until next year. For those who have doubts, for those who have doubts, you may read the article caption, Region 4, major capital work postponed until next year. 
How are you going to build and expand the economy when you're contracting even expenditure in the government sector? What confidence are you sending? What confidence are you sending to the private sector, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we have heard a lot. We have heard a lot about rice and the plight and the plight faced by the rice farmers. We always told the truth to the rice farmers. We always told the truth to the rice farmers. Mr. Speaker, we never promised 9,000 per bag. We never promised 9,000 per bag. Mr. Speaker, I call on this government to deliver to the rice farmers immediately $9,000 per bag. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, and if, and if the government do not want to deliver the 9,000 per bag, I am calling on this government to deliver to the rice farmers the $23 billion in the national budget. I am calling on that. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the question is, where is the $23 billion? Where is it? But Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Minister of Finance believes that we don't know where, but we will call him out. Because I will say to I will say to the honorable member that we are putting him on guard. Should should the negotiations for the avenue through which they're expecting this deal fall through, we are going to hold the government accountable in providing that twenty-three billion dollars. You will have to take Mr. Speaker, you will have to take it out the consolidated fund and give it to the rice farmers because we're going to hold you accountable. You announce it. You announce it. Mr. Speaker, in, a, in addition to this, Mr. Speaker, in addition to this, we call on the government to immediately establish a national party price support system. We ask the government, Mr. Speaker, to maintain production. We ask the government to maintain production above 600,000 tons and to have markets ready. You said in the campaign, we will deliver higher paying markets and better markets. We are asking the government to deliver to the rice farmers the higher paying and better markets for 500,000 tons of rice ready to be exported. Mr. Speaker, we, we work on a program, programmatic approach dealing with rice. We expanded our export to more than 32 countries. And we have plans in place to further expand that to more than 40 countries. We further ask the government to continue to improve paddy yields to 40 bags per acre. We ask the government to encourage value added. Do not look at agricultural diversification in a narrow way. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member spoke about agricultural diversification. And the Honorable Minister of Business has sought it fit to stop two important projects in two predominantly rice growing areas, Wakenham and Leguan in which we are trying to have the farmers expand into new areas of planting production. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, when we announced this project, we were in government. And the then opposition, the then opposition were critical of this project. Only a few months ago, only a few months ago, the Canadians had an advertisement in the newspaper for $100 million of support for the planting industry. $100 million of support for the planting industry. 
we are talking about agriculture. The same thing, Mr. Speaker, when we talk about the cereal plant in Essequibo, they were critical of it. They were critical of it. Today in the budget is a grand announcement. A grand announcement. We will build cereal plants and utilize this as one, as one aspect. As one, we are, build, we are building the forest in Essequibo. You have inherited that. You have inherited that. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. If you look at the infrastructure, $13 billion. And Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Finance said, this government is announcing fresh projects. Fresh projects. And he announced $13 billion for the East Coast Highway. The Sherry Street expansion, Mandela Bypass Road, Ogle to Diamond, West Demerara Highway. Mr. Speaker, these are all PPP civic projects. All of it, all of it was conceptualized and negotiated under the PPPC. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, much of it, much of it, was delayed by the then opposition in the last three years. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the same can be said about the maternity wing of the Georgetown Hospital. The Honorable Minister announced we're going to expand the maternity wing, uh, wing by 100 beds. This project has even started. It has started a year ago under the PPP civic government. Nothing fresh, nothing new. Nothing fresh, nothing new. Mr. Speaker, we ask that this government immediately reinstate the subsidies enjoyed by pensioners totaling 500 million. 500 million. Immediately implement your plan Immediately implement your plan on reducing the Barbies River Crossing by $1,200. Immediately fulfill, immediately fulfill your 20% increase in salary retroactive from January 2014. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we ask this government to immediately increase, to immediately fulfill their campaign promise by doubling the old age pension. That was supposed to be done in your 100 days. We ask this government to immediately review, to immediately review electricity tariff, to immediately review the electricity tariff, taking into consideration the reduction of gas price. We ask this government to immediately commence the construction of a new 100 bed Hospital at the East Bank, expansion of 100 bed at the East Bank Regional Hospital, and two new hospitals in Port Kaichuma and, and Region 8. Mr. Speaker, if we want a transform economy, if we want a transform economy, complete the following projects the Amila Falls Hydro, Deepwater Har Harbor, New Damara Bridge, the airport. The quarantine bridge to, to Suriname, Latin Brazil Road Corridor, Honourable Member, the East Bank Road Corridor. Honourable Member, you have ten minutes more. The East Bank Road Corridor, the East Coast Road Corridor, the Hospitality Institute, the call centres in Enmore and Tushin, the chip factory and the specialised hospital. If you want transformation. If you want Guyana to be transformed, we call upon you. We call upon you to complete these projects. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, at a minimum, at a minimum, we call upon this government to make available to the Minister of Agriculture, Daisuku, $20 billion for the modernization and expansion of the sugar industry. With a name, with a name, Mr. Speaker, with a name of taking production to 400,000 tons and increasing packaged sugar to, to, to 50,000 tons. 
Mr. Speaker, to expand the economy, bring confidence, and create new opportunities. We ask the government to establish free zones in particular regions to encourage industrial development and trade. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I wish to turn my attention. Mr. Speaker, I wish to turn my attention to the measures for old age pensioners. Mr. Speaker, if you turn to page 35 of their manifesto, the coalition manifesto, you will see the promise to double the old age pension and public assistance. No, no, this is what you said. This is what you said. Mr. Speaker, they said, they said immediately, immediately upon assuming office, immediately upon assuming office, we will double the pension for old age pensioners. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, not only did they promise to double the pipe pension for the old age pensioner, they promised they promise to waiver passport renewal costs. They promised to remove payment for motor vehicle license. They promised to remove payment for motor vehicle fitness, for driver's license, for, for road, bridge, and ferry tolls. And furthermore, Mr. Speaker, they promised to remove the airport exit tax. There is also silence on the measures to reduce the time and cost for the collection of old age pension. These are promises you made to immediately implement, to immediately implement an assumption of office. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, if we cannot hold them accountable to their own promises, what else can we hold them accountable to? Mr. Speaker, the, the, honourable public servants, member has, the honourable member has five minutes more. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, they promise, Mr. Speaker, they promise, they, the coalition promised the public servants 20% increase. And the Honourable Minister of Finance, the Honourable Minister of Finance said that the way he structured the minimal increase far below the 20% is to ensure is to ensure that we bridge the inequality gap where well, something is wrong with his mathematical skills. Because, Mr. Speaker, when you check the differentiation, the higher earning public servant is going to take home 300% more than the lower earning public servant. How are you bridging the inequality gap? How? When they will be taking home 300% more based on the percentage that you, based on the percentage that you would have announced. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this, this government, Mr. Speaker, what they can do is to take the illegal transfer to the auditors, they, and Mr. Speaker, this is highly questionable. This, is, this flies in the face of every aspect of transparency and accountability. You are doing a forensic audit. The process of identifying those auditors should at least be transparent. There is no advertisement. There is no tender process. There is no examination of the qualification of the auditors. There is no examination of the qualification of the auditors. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, time has catch up with them. Time has catch up with them. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, they are on the journey, they are the, on the journey of destroying every single credible, every single credible institution this PP civic government has established. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the honorable members, when they were in the opposition and in their manifesto, they spoke about principles and laws governing collective bargaining in accordance with our commitment on the International Labor Organization. 
Mr. Speaker, where was the principle when you arbitrarily, when you arbitrarily impose an increase on the workers? Mr. Speaker, there was no consultation with the GPSU. And the GPSU, the GPSU is calling for a minimum of $100,000 to be paid to the workers. On this note, on this note, Mr. Speaker, I am in support of the GPSU request. I am in support. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker we are in support. We are in support because in our manifesto, in our manifesto, we promise to increase the salaries of public servants by far more than 20%. By far more than 20%. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member. You have two minutes more. Mr. Speaker. Two minutes more, Honorable Member. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the budget speech, the Honorable Minister of Finance said he is going to re-examine the salaries, the salaries of ministers and parliamentarians prior to 1992 because he wants to adjust the pension. What about the nurses, the teachers, what about the police workers, the police officers who would have worked prior to 1992? Aren't they equally important? Aren't they equally important? We, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member, your time is up. Mr. Speaker, uh, due to the interruptions, uh, an understanding order, understanding order 38, Understanding order 39A, sir, I'm asking for the comment be given five more minutes to wrap up his presentation. Thank you, sir. I'm afraid I did not hear the, I did not hear the honorable member clearly. Thank you, sir. I am asking that understanding order 389A, that the uh, Honourable Member, Mr. Ali, be allowed to have five more minutes to conclude his presentation. Uh, you know, there have been a lot of interruptions, you know, sir. And so it was sometimes hard to even hear the comrade speaking. I'm sitting right next to him. Thank you. Honourable Member, I know that Mr. Ali has already resumed the seat and completed his presentation. We will go to the next speaker. We will go to the next speaker. The next speaker is Mr. Honorable Dominic Gaskin.